So I managed to be able to uh, get a visualization of our framework. I'm on top of steel, no roof. And what I had done is I went to the view template and went to the structural framing plan and selected that and applied that. And um, at least that started to visualize my columns, but just a single element. Then I had to change this to fine, but I couldn't because I was in a view template. So I went back and undid the structural framing. So what it, the template had actually done was just turn the framing components on in this view. And then um, if I click this back to fine, I get my full size of my framing elements. And if I want to be able to see it just a little bit better, I could actually um, just do a shaded rendering. So now I can see the structure um, on this view that I've created. And that gives me a chance to start thinking about this idea of tributary, tributary loadings. So here's the column. And this is really the area, since this, the column repeats are this way, it's obvious that our area that we are um, loading on top of this column is bounded by this, this rectangle here. So I'm going to create a conceptual mass, or a, um, I think I'll try this with a model in place. I'm not sure if I can give it a, um, uh, I'll give it a generic model term. And I don't really care what I name it. And it's going to be an extrusion. And we'll try to go in from the center of the grid all the way over to the other end of this grid. And that's reporting 65 by 65, so that's good. And we'll click that out. And now we're going to go to an elevation just to see, um, get a visualization of that. And we really want it, we're just trying to make up an idea of what a load, an implied load is, um, what it looks like. So I'm just going to tie it off to the bottom of the louver system, and I'll let this come up free. And we need to give it a material that's kind of um, maybe a translucent red. So I'm going to create a new material. Um, I'll rename it. red mass and under the appearance palette I'll pick a red color and I'll give it transparency and I think this is uh, we probably want it about more transparent than solid I'll apply that click OK and now let's look at this in a 3D view and see if what we've got here. And I'll click it off. So we have that mass now that's sitting there with a bit of transparency to it. All right, so we have the one there. Let's go ahead and place the other ones. So I'm going to go back to that roof area. And this time I'm going to go to, I'll go to realistic, see if we can, oops, I haven't finished the model off yet. And I think we need, because it's got transparency, oh, we're above it, so we're not actually able to see it. But we can select it. And I'm going to just copy it up. So I'll grab it in the center. And I'm going to move it up to that area where we're going to look at a cantilever. And I'm going to select it and I'm just going to generalize it or generally get it into the shape that I want because we're going to we're going to adjust this one in plan view because we need a few extra grid elements. We have that one and now let's go ahead and copy that over again. And that's for identifying one of our beams that is the least supported in our structural system. Okay, so let's go ahead then and take a look at that one more time. All right, so there we have our loads. We still don't have our widths quite set for that yet, but that we're going to deal with next. So I'll go back to this view and we can see our conceptual masses. And let's start looking at doing some sections right now. So I'm gonna to go to view 
And I'm going to go ahead and make a section. Oops. Sorry. Grab the section tool. I always draw the wrong direction. That time I happened to do it right. We only want to look at specifically the condition of what's there like that. And let's go ahead and open that section up. And the detail, if we turn this up to fine, we'll be able to see our beam there. And we can go ahead and crop this way down. And we really want to show our mass system sitting up above it. Our mass system, or just our, our visualization of what a mass uh, might be on top of there. We're also going to, I'm going to run these a little bit, well, I'll leave it at one eighth inch scale right now. We'll deal with that a little later when we get to, I'm going to pull these out. Actually, I should just disconnect this one, unlock it, so I can, um, so I can adjust this. All right. And let's, let's put it on realistic rendering. Why do we have, I don't know why we have it dark like that. I'm not going to worry about that right this minute. Okay, so we have our first section. We can see our cantilever beam that we're implying our load on. And we need a little more information here. So what I'm going to do is actually... I'm going to expand this out a little bit for now. Now what we can see is, is our load is between these two points. And maybe actually we'll leave this in the view. This might make this whole thing a little more clear. We'll leave these two column supports here, visual, visible. And we know that our loads are halfway between these two points. So we can go ahead and create a couple of lines, model lines. Tell me it's not going to let me draw a model line here. Well, we'll do it another way then. We're going to draw a, a grid line. And we know that it's uh, 32.5. So it's 16.25. And It'll be the exact same on this side. And we get to 16.3, so we, we know we're in the center. And now we're going to go ahead and, and use that to just set up our conceptual mass so it's the right dimension. And then we can go ahead and annotate this. Um, so we get our right, our takeoffs for the kind of loads that might be on top of that column. Now we need the transverse look at that. So I'm going to go back to that view again. And you'll notice those new grid lines have been added in. And we're going to take a section the other way. So I'm going to go to view section and our next view we want to crop it way down and we'll go to section two and the same thing as before we're going to just tighten this whole thing up Okay, so now it's really clear that we have a cantilever here. We're not showing any kind of beam in the background. We don't have any depth there. I don't think that's really that. Well, let's just go back to our referring view here. If I pull it back a little bit more, we'll catch a column. That might be a little bit um, misleading.
So I'm probably going to, I'm going to undo that. And let's see, we could probably pull these up so they're not sitting in the, in the field. And then we can annotate that also. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start building a sheet up. I'm going to go to sheet, new sheet. I've got to find the, um, our, our typical, um, I don't have it in there. Let's see if I have it in here. Our digital misspelled title block. And I'm just going to pull these two sections on so we can start thinking about what we're building. So we have, well, obviously, we do want to line these up a little better. Starting to give us a little idea of how we want to, um, and I'll give these all a common rendering um, look in a minute. Now we have, so we have our, we have our, um, this is our cantilevered condition, and I'll rename that in a minute. I just want to start setting up our views so we know where we're going with all of this. Let's go back and look at our um, our column now. So we're, here's our load on our column. We really only need to take one view because we're just looking at the load on the column. So I'm going to go back and grab a section view again. And we've got to make sure we get all of our load in. So now we have a general indication of, and I'm going to pull this one grid line up. All right, and we go ahead and go to the sheet and pull that onto the sheet. And we have one other condition. So we have our cantilever condition, we have our column that we're going to analyze, and then uh, last we have this overall um, conceptual mass that's sitting right here. All right, so that's enough to show us just that we have a, a simply supported beam between with a uniformly distributed load for the analysis of this beam element. And we need another view on the other direction so that we know how big it is. And let's go back to that again. And we'll take another section view the other way. And I drew that wrong, so I'll start it again. Oh, did it again the wrong way. And we'll just close up the scope box a little bit. And we'll go to that view. And just get into the detail that we need. I don't know what I did there. I must have missed the must have picked the wrong area a little bit. And 
And we're not seeing the beam here because we don't have a level of detail high enough. All right, so let's go back to our sheet. And now we can drag section four and section five on. Get them relatively lined up. So at least we have now an idea of what our overall uh, page layout might be. And we need to go through and now start cleaning up and cleaning up the drawings and adding some of the 3D views and also that might support our description of what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start modifying these things, but I won't go through it tediously on the video. We'll, um, I'll come back once I've gotten some things straightened out.